Professor Piantelli cannot be here because uh, he has some problem. Uh, here we have uh, Mr. Valerio Ciampoli, that is uh, the, the man in the management of Nick Energy, that is the company for, uh, in belong uh, Professor Piantelli. Valerio Ciampoli is graduated in economics in Bocconi University in 2002. And now he is the CEO of uh, Anaf Solar, a leader Italian company in the uh, renewable energy sector. As a member of the management team of Nick Energy, contributes uh, to the strategic development of the company in the market. Mr. Ciampoli is also supported by Mr. William Collis, uh, that he is the chief executive of the International Society for Condensed Matter Nuclear Science. Please. Good morning to everyone. And during a biophysics experiment performed, uh, by the way, um, what I'm going to say has been written by Professor Piantelli. He's very sorry uh, for not being here, but uh, I will try to be as close as possible to his ideas that he shared with me. Uh, during a biophysics experiment performed in August 1989 in an environment containing hydrogen gas and uh, in the presence of a very pure nickel foil, we observed an excess heat which could not be explained by the supplied electric power. The electric power was introduced by means of two terminals welded to the outer edges of the plate. In the following years, we performed many other experiments in order to verify the first observation, and we obtained a lot of emissions of thermal energy and of different kinds of radiation too. Hundreds of experiments have made the anomalous phenomenon reproducible. In this presentation, we present the current state of the research, which at present it is only research, and it can be translated in few months into industrial products. Moreover, we present a possible path in order to develop this intriguing and very complex research area. It is not still possible to attribute a specific name to the anomalous phenomenon. In fact, even if there are many evidences collected in the many, by the many researchers in a lot of important laboratories, the final and key experiment able to clarify all the aspects is still lacking. The final experiment must assure the necessary and absolutely essential self-consistency of all the results as it is required by the four rules of Galileo, the founder of the scientific method. The existence of the anomalous phenomenon is now out of doubt because there is a very big amount of absolutely irrefutable and unassailable experimental data. Whilst 23 years ago it was easy to refute because there were not yet self-consistent and repeatable results, and the proposed explanation, if they were correct from the mathematical point of view, could not be attributed more to, could be attributed more to fantasy rather than known and experimentally tested facts, today it is pathological to deny all the results which were seen and measured. For example, it is necessary to explain how it is possible that charged particle that you can see here, this one and here a uh, bigger one, with energies greater than 6 MeV photographed in the cloud chamber can be emitted by a simple metal rod just after extraction from the cell. Where gamma, ray, where gamma photons with energies of the order of several MeV come from, detected by germanium spectrometer and other um, machines. 
here you can see here you can see this line uh, sorry for the mouse this is the background these are the measured datas this one above and this is the difference between the two this one on the over here is the just a zoom of this little part and over here also is possible to see a difference between the background and the measurement the lower part of the slide shows the photon emission spectrum <coughs> this is still a zoom of this part principle is the same background against the measure this is a photon emission spectrum for five weeks this is week number one week number two three four and five and it's possible to see how things are changing in the time Um, another evidence of the anomalous spectrum is over here where you see a big difference between background and measured emissions. And this is another slide. Here you can find uh, another peak of the gold activated by neutrons and some background spectra. So were th these neutrons detected by means of helium-3 detector and activated by gold foil at the same time come from? Even if this fact, fortunately for us, took place only sporadically, during some ignition experiments with very low flow. Uh, here you can find another detail of the region around 411 kV and uh, neutrons emission revealed by the helium-3 detector. These of course are minutes and counts. So were the activity quite low of the samples extracted immediately after the experiments come from? This activity disappeared in about two months. This is a, um, a rod that we use in uh, one of our experiments in which you can see two different regions. The detection of, the, of elements and substances which weren't present inside the cell at the beginning of the experiments and which were found in considerable amount measured by XRF technique and other methods when the rods were extracted from the cell in which anomalous phenomenon took place. <coughs> These intruder elements were observed only in activated regions while at the edges of the nickel rod, where the primer didn't take place, only pure nickel is present. I'm going to explain you a little bit about this uh, semi-edex analysis of the surface of the nickel rod. Here you find two graphs, graph number A and B. Uh, here you see point number one and two. So graph number A relates to point number one where the anomalous phenomenon didn't took place and uh, point, point number two is related to graph B. Um, you can see how the spectrum detected on the rod surface in point number two in a, in a region where there was energy production has been measured by means of the temperature on the external surface. So you uh, can see how different uh, these graphs are and how many different components are present in the second uh, uh, graph. 
to all these measurements, we have to add also the production of thermal energy. Um, these are other experiments that we perform in our laboratory. Here you can see a typical cell activation. So uh, in red you see the temperature inside the cell minus the ambient temperature, of course, and uh, in blue the, the inlet power. You can see that with an inlet power of uh, 38 watts, the temperature before the ignition was between 218 and 219. After the ignition, we had an increase of temperature and a decrease of inlet power. This is basically the same kind of uh, experiment with different temperature. Here we have about 100 degrees of difference between the two. Let me check the timing. Uh, these experiments uh, took about 55 days. So here is about 55 days. Uh, this means a lot because usually in this kind of experiments uh, it's pretty, I wouldn't say easy, but it's pretty common to have uh, some effect, but it's rather difficult having uh, this effect for a long, long time. And 55 days is, can be considered long. Uh, this is another kind of activation, initial chemical physical energy production put into evidence. In, uh, the, we use this test to show that it's possible to have a significant amount of energy emitted by the cell in the very early stage. Uh, we consider this effect not as a nuclear effect, but as a chemical physical effect because um, it just doesn't last. Uh, in our experiments, we try to make this effect as small as possible. In fact, you can see this, uh, this little uh, up here, which correspond in another cell activation to this big peak. Then, uh, this is a... Uh, probably the most interesting graph that I will show you. To all these measurements, we have to add also the production of thermal energy in large quantities of the order of megajoule in cells, which kept on working for tens of months without adding gas. And in the case of the last experiments, which is not this one, also without introducing electrical supply or others or others. This fact is of course the most relevant fact from the point of view of industrial applications. This should be necessary therefore to explain how it is possible that this cell of about one kilogram stayed at 300 degrees without any adding gas and external energy for some months. Uh, on the right, here in black, you see the, the taratura, uh, the setup of the temperature sensor. And uh, after the setup, we uh, went back at this point, um, giving uh, about 30 watt to our cell. Then we started the process, bringing the cell from uh, 150 degrees to above 400 degrees and then we made several procedures on our cell and we were a 